Hello, programming 11. I am going to show you how to uh, import a font from the internet that you've downloaded and uh, add, add that into processing. In another, in another video, we looked at uh, making text. So maybe watch that video first and then come back and check out uh, this one if you haven't seen it already. So first of all, I want to show you where you can find fonts. There, there's many sites out there for downloading free fonts. Uh, this is a good one here called dafont.com, so easy one to find, and you can search by all these different categories or just look and see what's come down the pipe recently. Uh, I downloaded Mentality as an example because it's nice and bold and will show up, I think, pretty well in the video. Uh, if, uh, if you download a font and it doesn't work, it might just be the font is bad. <laughs> so. Um, you know, maybe do the same steps and try a different font. I've had people have, you know, do everything correct and downloaded a font and it just didn't work out. So, you know, free things sometimes don't work on the internet. So, you know, buyer beware. But uh, if you find something you like, download it, try it out, and here's the steps of how you bring it into processing. So first of all, you download it and you would save it. For me, I'm just going to save it to my desktop. Uh, I've already done that, so I'm not going to click save. I'll click cancel, but you would click save. And then you have to unzip your... Uh, font. It comes in a zip file. So if you go over here, let's see, where did mine download? M for mentality. Maybe I did delete it. No, oh, here it is, mentality uh, dot zip. So I have to unzip this and put it into a folder where my sketch is. So you might be like, huh, where is my sketch? So you should probably save your sketch first. Uh, I'm not going to bother because uh, this is just a demonstration. But save your sketch in the place you would normally save it. And then, once you've saved it, you can press Control k K is in kick. <laughs> I can't think of a better K word. K is in kangaroo. And uh, it'll open up the folder where your sketch lives. Uh, and that should have the sketch name right there. And what you'll want to do is make a new folder called data. And the data folder is a special folder that processing will recognize as having additional files like font files uh, contained inside. Okay, so... Next step is to open up the zip file, and you can drag out the .ttf, and I think OTF works as well. There might be a few other formats uh, that work, so just try what you can. Almost, you know, universally, you can find TTF, uh, true type font is what that stands for. OTF is open type font. Uh, TTF is pretty common, so you probably won't struggle with finding TTF files. So you're just going to drag that out of the zip file and into the data file. If you're on a Mac, this will be a little bit different. You'll probably double click on the zip file and it'll pop out a folder that will contain all these things and then you can drag them to your data folder from there. And just to confirm, if I go into my data folder, I see mentality.ttf right in there. Uh, I will make sure that you take uh, careful notice of the spelling and also capitalization of this file. So notice that it's a capital M. So when we go to type in this file name, uh, we'll have to remember exactly how it's spelled. Uh, including, oh, uh, <laughs> sorry, including the .ttf part. If you don't see the .ttf, um, I don't know how to do it on a Mac off the top of my head, but you can figure that out pretty easily. Oh, I'm forgetting now. Hmm. I forget how to do that. Oh, view. If you click on the, here in the Windows Explorer tab in Windows 10, you can click on view. And over here, you can check off uh, file name extensions. And then it will show you the .ttf, so you can get the whole file name, which is important. OK, so that's, uh, that's the first uh, set of things to do. Now that, that we've done that, we can go and load that font and apply it to our text. So I'm going to put in um, void setup with a size of whatever, and void draw. I'll put in like a black background. I'll put in some text. Um, hello. Oops. I'll center it. And I guess for that to be centered, I should also include text align. Center, center, which will make sure that that 300, 300 is you know roughly the center of the text as opposed to some random corner. Um, yeah, so if I run that, you'll see, oh, I guess I should choose a font size as well. Uh, text size is the right term for that. Let's make it nice and big, 50, and we'll run it, and we'll see that we get the word hello showing up. 
in the center of our screen. Let's make it a little bit bigger so you can see that font. 200, whoa, so big, whoa, hello. <laughs> it's, it's, uh, it's large. Okay, so now how do I use that font file that I downloaded and put into my data folder? So the way to do that is simply to load the font and then use uh, text font, the function text font, to apply it. So to load a font, we're going to need a variable to store the font. And you know how we usually make an int variable? Well, there's other kind of variables we can make too. We can make a p font variable. p stands for processing, so this is a processing font. And I'm just going to call it um, mentality because that's the name of the font. And if I load many fonts, it's good to keep track of what what font is stored in what variable. And that's the easiest way for me to remember. Uh, next, I need to uh, like convert the TTF file into a P font. So in setup, because you only need to do this one time, uh, you can say mentality equals create font. This is a function and is an argument. You could put a string of, or like use the double quotes, just like you did for hello. And I'm going to put in that file name, making sure that I include all the capitalization. Mentality.ttf. Yeah, beautiful. So I can load that font now, and it should um, be good to go. I probably should run it at this point just to test it, uh, but it won't be very exciting. And I'm pretty sure that's correct. So the last step is to just apply the font. So I'm going to say, oh, no, actually, I did make a mistake. There is one other argument here. You do have to put in an additional number. Uh, I honestly don't know what this number means. I always just put this number as the same as the text size, but any number greater than zero seems to work just fine. So if you put one or 200 or I don't really notice a difference ever when, um, when I make this. But anyways, once you've done that step correctly, you then go text font. No, uh, yeah, yeah, that's right. Uh, and then whatever your variable's name is. So my variable is called mentality. So I stick that in there. Okay, so in addition to the other stuff, we got sort of one, two, three lines of additional code and that file setup stuff you have to do. So if we run that, we'll get mentality uh, as a different font there. It doesn't look as good as I thought it would. Maybe it's a capitalization. That's, that's, that's better. <laughs> You'll notice it's smaller than Arial, and that's not a problem with processing. That's just the font is designed to be smaller and more condensed or whatever it is. So you might have to adjust this text size afterwards. Okay, so there's adding in fonts. I think fonts can add a lot of personality to your project. If you have any text inside, then choosing a font that's more, um, you know, soft or edgy or, you know, whatever it is that you want to express about your personality, uh, fonts can do a lot. And Arial has almost no personality. It's like, that's why they choose it as like the default font so often because it's very businesslike and straightforward and boring. So, uh, I mean, unless you're straightforward and businesslike and boring, in which case, by all means, use Arial as your font. Okay? Anyways, thanks, everybody. I hope that was clear. We will see ya later.